Maddie. Let's go. Episode 13 of The Mentors coming to you live from HQ. Hi, Claudio. Hello. Is this Mr. Adam Gilbanks? It is me. How are you, my friend? Good, good. Yourself? Good. I've got Matt LaHood here and also Clinton from The Mentors. Hello. Adam, welcome. Hi, guys. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> so, um, uh, Adam, tell us a little bit about yourself first, just for some of the listeners out there um, and what market you work in. I work up at uh, McGrath Hornsby. I, I guess our market, it's uh, just, a, I guess, it's middle of the range sort of properties. I do a lot of uh, apartments. There's a lot of apartments in the Hornsby Waitara area. Yep. And also a mixture of houses. So, they, uh, they've been doing it here for four and a half years now. Wow. Yep. Cool. And how's that been going for you? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Uh, you know, I started off uh, back in late 2013, 2014, and, uh, you know, I basically hit the hit the ground running up here. I came straight in com only, so I had to hit some goals to make it all work, but it's uh, it's worked out really well for us. And That's I, great. I just enjoy this market. Yeah. How, how is your market up there at the moment? It's slow. It's very slow. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie, sound familiar? Slow market at the moment. Yeah. We've heard that a couple uh, of times today. Slow. We've had a couple of calls already this morning where we've been speaking, uh, a few agents have been saying the market's been a bit slow. It's so is it, uh, Adam, it's Matt here. How are you going? Yeah, so good, Matt. just quickly, is it buyer inquiry or is it um, is it offers? Is it is the numbers dropped at open? So you're still getting it's, the buyers, but you're not getting the offers. Look, numbers have definitely dropped and, and we're also not getting the activity that we're used to. You know, before, even if the numbers were down, you'd get you know, two or three people over the course of a couple of weeks that would give offers. Yes. Now, basically, what I'm finding is you're just not getting any offers. You know, we can have a price guide or, or take a price guide off a property or, or go to the buyers and say, look, what would you be prepared to pay for it? And they, they just don't give you an answer. They just don't want to commit. Um and that there's where it's really hard to create any competition or draw out any offers. Yeah, right. right. Okay. So, all right. Well, now that we know your market, understand where you're working up on the Upper North Shore of Sydney at the moment. Tell us, um, and it's interesting, we were just on a call from a mm-hmm. guy down in, uh, in Melbourne in the inner city before, and yeah. he's experiencing the same, trying to get vendors aligned, etc. Tell us, um, what's your question for the mentors today? I guess my question uh, for you guys is I'm now getting to the point where we've got some properties that are on the market, you know, five, six, seven, eight weeks and trying to inf- give the, the vendors <laughs> quality information week after week. You know, you come to week one, week two, week three, week four is fine, giving them updates and letting them know what you're doing. But after sort of week five, week six, I'm really running out of things to tell them that lets them know that we are being productive behind the scenes and how often I should be calling them because I, I can't sort of call them every day. Or I can't think of anything to tell them that's, that's newsworthy every day. Yeah, especially being after five or six weeks. Just before we go quickly there, Adam, are most of the, your properties private treaty or auction, just so we get an understanding? Uh, pro- private treaty. Private, private treaty. Okay, so week five, week six, Maddie, you're still on the market. Your vendor's going, what the hell's going yeah. on? Adam, from his point of view, goes, what information can I ring them about? Because now I'm like, want to just feel like I'm still serving them, but what can so Adam, he be doing? this is um, p- potentially back to around 2010 and then back to 1990, uh, 1989, sort of 90, these market conditions. They, it's, a, it's just part of the cycle of real estate. Uh, yeah. Can't boom all the time because it, if, in, in anything that goes up, we always know it comes down and vice versa. Um, so we're in a cycle at the moment where the the, the uh, strong agents are going to ri- the the cream's going to rise to the top, right? Mm. So what yeah. I'd be doing, I would be having more face to face meetings rather than emails and phone calls. Yeah. Are your vendors living in these properties, or are they investors? Or well, look, a lot of the apartments, I'd say seventy percent of the apartments are investors, and they're either interstate or overseas. The, the houses, they're generally in there, and I do try and meet with them face to face. I think so, you've got to meet face to face every week with someone you can. Skype's also another opportunity, or FaceTime, or Zoom, yeah. um, or Zoom. Um, yeah. there's, there are ways where you know, it's sort of no excuse now to... Can I ask you why face-to-face, Matt? Yeah, because face-to-face, what? like people are so busy today, you send them an email, you, you ring them on the phone, you just don't know what's happening on the other end of the phone. They could have their, you know, three-year-old kid dragging along their leg or something when you're trying to talk to them and they're trying to cook dinner or whatever. Um, yeah. If you sit with them, you've got their undivided attention. And would yeah. you do it at their property or yeah, at the office? Yeah, hundred percent. I'd do it at their property, yeah. um, or at their work, yeah. or what? Look, whatever it takes, Clouds. If you can only yeah. get them in the office, get them in the office. I used 
when it was really tight years ago, I used to go. I used to my whole week was vendor management. I used to go and yeah. sit in their work. So I had a couple of owners that were in the city over the years. I was in Randwick, so a lot of my clients were in the city. I just used yep. to go and spend the day in the city. I'd go and do vendor meetings, meet one at 10 for a coffee, another one at lunch, another one at one. Yep. Then I'd come back to Randwick and just vendor meet all day and give them the face-to-face, like, what do you want to do? Because it's not a case of, you know, when you're saying you've got nothing to tell them, you actually do have something to tell them. You say, look, I haven't had any internet inquiries. I did have two emails. I did – I'd called back everyone again of – spoken to my colleagues, I've called buyers, agents to get them through. There's always something to tell them. Mm. It's just not good news. If it's not good news, I mean, well, you can't manufacture stuff. We don't want to do that. Mm. That's not... And, you know, you do have something to tell them. You can always tell them you've got no inquiry. Um, And that's the truth. That's right. I guess their finding with some of the feedback I have, you know, I... When I give them feedback, everyone wants a bit of good news now and then. If there's, there's yeah. no offers or there's no one coming through that they're delivering that week after week, I think they uh, you've got to be careful that you, you you go in there looking like you're still positive about the property, not so, oh, all Adam's doing is giving me negative stuff. He yeah, doesn't think it's going to sell. But, Adam, I think you've got to remind them that you get paid when it sells. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. what I used to tell my vendors. Look, I'm on your side. I'm wearing the same jersey, right? Um I'm on your side and um, that I get paid when they sell. So I'm not holding it back, trust me. Mm. Um, I'm commission only. I eat, I don't sell, I don't eat. So Mm. let's be very clear about my intention to help you get this sold. Um, But I want you to get the best result. And if it's not going to come right now, it might be in six months' time. We might have to take the property off the market. I remember taking a number of properties off the market when I was selling Yep. And telling the owners, look, I'm going to come back. I'm going to ring you if they wanted eight hundred thousand. It was worth seven. Mm-hmm. I'd say yep. to them, look, Mr. Ms. Vendor, tell you what I'm going to. I'm going to call you when it hits eight hundred. It might be in another year or six months or twelve months. But it's seven hundred thousand is where it's at now. We've got two. Yep. We've got two choices. We can sell it for seven and move on, or we can wait yep. for eight and I'll call you in six to twelve months or two years. <laughs> I think you've got to have yeah. a. Th- that's the best way. No point sitting there at eight hundred and it's never going to sell. That's right. Yeah, because you're 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 a, if you've got ten listings, Adam, you're better off having four that are going to sell mm. and take the other yeah. six off the market. And and I think yeah. it re- and, and I think it really comes down to even if it gets to week six or seven, it's 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 still about being proactive with that listing and giving them ideas and strategies that can help them move that property. And I think for you, Adam, it could look like um, you know, for example, you know. Maybe doing, you know, if, if as long as in your heart of hearts they're aligned and the vendors are motivated because, you know, some vendors today aren't yep. motivated. They're still thinking like 2017 prices, let's be honest, okay? Yeah, of course. And they don't have to sell. I don't know how much time and effort I'll be putting on those people. Yeah, like totally Matt said, agree. Like if they're 100 grand apart or even 50 grand and you know you're never going to get that, it's almost like saying, here, why don't we give it a rest? You hold on to the property. I'll give you a call maybe in six months, 12 months, 18 months' time. Once your property's worth 750 or 800, that's number one. But if you're going yes. to work with the ones who are motivated and are aligned with you, okay, and the market, you would possibly even do maybe like doing something like a Sunday open. Um, I know a couple of my clients are starting to do it and they're starting to get some traction and results, meaning that, you know what, if, if something's capped out, we sometimes can't re- rely on – you know, the, the things that used to work. Same before. old ways. Same old way, mm. like relying on history. Yeah. Maybe we need to do things a little bit different. If something's capping out, means do an alternative, right? So the alternative might say, okay, my vendor's motivated. He really needs to sell because he's bought a property, okay? He's listening to my suggestions. He's on price, not getting as many buyers. Let me do a Sunday open, for example, okay? And then sort of see what happens there. So at least your vendor then sen- senses, wow, you're really going out of your way. You're really committed, engaged, you're yeah. trying to get the best price and you're willing to come out of on a Sunday day to do an open home for our property. So they're going to see a yeah. level of commitment. It's, val- it's val- value adding. Value adding, okay. Now, yeah. the other thing is, Clinton, um, are you doing any social media stuff with your these properties that you, you, you market at the moment? Yeah, we are. We're putting them on, I guess, uh, Instagram, in our Facebook feeds. We, we are doing quite a bit of stuff around that as well. Are you, are you boosting? Y- yeah, we, we do do boosting. Um, and the yeah, we, we don't boost all of them, but some of them we do boost. I, you know, again, I track how many likes and shares or comments mm-hmm. I get on it. I, I don't think it's big at all. You know, you, you might only get 
50, 100 uh, sort of likes on some of them, even after they're boosted. So I don't know if they're going to the wrong audience or people to start clicking on them, but I'm not seeing a lot of traction from, okay. from that. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to handball you over to our third mentor here, Clinton, who is the guru around social media. So <laughs> here we go. Is is into week six, no week seven, meeting a vendor, right? Yep. Is already doing a little bit on social media. Yep. What would you recommend for someone like Adam? And there's a lot of agents who are probably listening or watching this today and thinking, okay, I've got a listing that's six or seven. What else can I be doing on a social media level with these properties? I, I think I think every every product is sellable. You just got to find the right person for it. And then when I look at um, when I look at all the different properties that I work with, there's always going to be a buyer for that property. Now mm. I'm not a real estate agent agent but I love getting creative with this sort of stuff so before you even think about advertising something you've got to think about the content that you're putting out yeah right because 80 yeah. percent of the equation here is the quality of the content that you're creating mm. um, you know for example if you've got an apartment and there's um, somebody living in it and you can't style it then you've got to work with what you've got so yeah. what else are you selling on this one what kind of content can you create yep. um, yeah so I think potentially what you need to do with this particular property that you're you're trying to push and you've you know five or six weeks into it is I would personally myself if I have to create a piece of content for this is I'm going back and I'm looking at what the owner absolutely loves about it I'm looking at can we do a video because it's a lot more dynamic than just having images for it yep. Um, yep. I'm thinking about where are people paying the most attention um, that I can put that piece of content in front of yep. um, because there's like storytelling at the end of the day is always going to be the key to winning and um, being able to humanise something rather than just make it a product and a transaction yep. is going to get emotional yep. connection with it um, so you've got to I think as an agent if I was an agent I'd be looking at the things that I'm super passionate about about with that particular property and then I'd also be looking at what the vendor is really passionate about with that property Yep. Um, and then going and creating the content that's going to sell that. Right, yep. okay. And then pushing it on, on platforms where people can actually see it. Yeah, so tactically then it's then you're looking at which platforms people are going to pay attention to. So um, we've talked about this before, we'll talk about it again. Instagram is absolutely fantastic but we're getting to a stage now where you've got to advertise, you've got to do it well. If you're not getting yeah. the cut through, if you're not getting the right engagement, if people aren't going crazy for it, then it's the content. That's the problem. Mm. It's yeah. not... It's not your advertising, it's the content. Um, on the flip side too, and we started to touch on this in, la in the last episode, is using um, Facebook to actually create lead generation ads. So have you ever heard of that? No. Uh, Facebook, not, not so much for the lead generation. I've heard of obviously promoting things, but not, not getting any lead generation off it. Yeah, so like when like if anybody goes into Facebook right now and they want to advertise, you're either boosting, yep. so you're, yep. you're putting it on your page and you're boosting it, or you go into Ads Manager and you create different types of campaigns on it. Yep. So what yep. we're talking about here is just selecting the campaign that actually says lead ad. Yep. And I would yep. strongly recommend every single agent that's selling a property that has professional photos or video. professional video yep. is using those yep. to create lead ads specifically in the area that they want to target. Now, another thing we didn't talk about in the last episode, which I think is relevant, is aside from creating that lead ad and having different options to sell it, you've also got to think about the demographics. It's not just people living in the area, but it's people travelling through the area. Because yeah. if yeah. I'm out of area coming into that area, Correct. I'm yeah. there on a Saturday, but I'm not there any other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah, point. yeah and yeah. that's yeah. an option in the demographics. That's really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Massive point. Massive point. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, okay. I mean... Um, it's creative at the end of the day. Yeah, mm. It's thinking what, what Clinton's just said then, I've just heard it really clear, it's doing something that everybody else isn't doing. Correct. Thinking outside yeah. the box. That's what I want you to be thinking. Adam, the other thing um, too is... If Saturday opens aren't working, do try yeah, Sundays, exactly. right? If um, your, your Facebook ads or Instagram isn't getting the cut through that you need to, think about maybe doing Facebook ad leads, you know what I mean, and doing yeah. those different I think you owe it to your owners to protect their property by not leaving it on the market too long, it's not going to sell, because you've got a history on core logic and RP data that it sat there yeah. for a year or six months or eight months, not good for the property. Of I course. think you should sit down and say to them, look, um, and, and for them it's no good telling them bad news. I mean, it's better off to put it back, you know, rent it out or do whatever it may be yeah. or yeah. leave it there unless they have to sell it. If they have to sell it, well, then you need to get a price reduction and move it. But I would work with only – what I found when I was selling day-to-day, -day, if I yeah. had three or four properties that were definite sellers, my energy would be up, my owner's energy would be up, the buyer's yep. energy would be up, and off the back of that, I'd create another four. <laughs> if I've got ten and six that aren't going to sell, 
the six are dragging my other four down, which yeah. is causing me to be distracted, and it's yeah. not the best thing. You've just got to get the four or three or two that are going to sell and That's work it. with them. That's it's it. no good giving yourself a fuzzy feeling you've got ten listings and six of them aren't going to sell. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's it's, it's actually right. destroying your mojo out there, and yeah. it's actually not doing the right thing by the vendors that are on the market, those six. Yeah. If they're not going to sell, yeah. you're actually damaging them by leaving them on the market because it looks like damaged goods. The other four, yep. you're distracting the four that want to sell because they're getting a little bit of your times going to those owners that aren't going to sell. And you might where have you that should be working on the four that have to sell and getting them out safely in the current market. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. No, that's a good tip, Matt. Okay. Okay. So, Adam, we're here. Yes. We're rolling on, mate. Do you, do we answer your question today on the mentors? No, absolutely. Thanks. Thanks all. Okay, well, listen, mate, thanks for joining us here. Hope you got a lot of out of it, and we'll catch you on our next episode of The Mentors. Thanks, Adam. Got something great from this episode? It would mean the world to us if you passed it on. Tune in each week as we mentor a new agent. Have a question? Want to be on the show? Get in touch with Claudio Encina, Matt LaHood, or visit our Facebook page. The Mentors is brought to you by Sprinkler.media. 